All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about PlayStation Plus um, and PlayStation now merging together and uh, making up an all new PlayStation Plus with three separate tiers. So I did talk about this a little bit in my Apex report video on the Apex Hound channel, but I think I'm going to do videos like this over here on the Apex Hound too. Um, I'm currently doing a Batman Arkham City uh, playthrough and uh, Lost Judgment, the Kaito Files DLC playthrough, as well as Mass Effect 3 as well. So if you're interested in playthrough stuff, you can subscribe here. Um, uh, but we're going to be talking more about the new stuff today. So we're going to go through all of the details of the new PlayStation Plus um, and if it can compete with X Xbox Game Pass and not only that, but if it needs to compete with Xbox Game Pass. So let's talk about it. Let's look at the pricing and all of the features that you get for each different tier. All right, guys, so they have confirmed that you will not be getting first party day one um, titles like you would with Game Pass, which is uh, pretty much what I talked about in my last video uh, over on the Apex Sound channel. I pretty much said they were never going to do that, and uh, I still think that personally. I don't think that'll ever happen, um, at least not in the near future. So we're going to talk about PlayStation Plus Essential to start with, which is basically just PS Plus as it is now. So um, there you go. It provides the same benefits that PlayStation Plus members are getting today, such as two monthly downloadable games, exclusive discounts, cloud storage for saved games, online multiplayer access. There are no changes for existing PlayStation Plus members in this tier, and that will stay pretty much the same price i believe now that is 8.99 a month here in europe 9.99 in the united states uh 25 uh if you're going down the quarterly route or 60 if you're going down the yearly route now um honestly if you are playstation plus i'd highly recommend going down the yearly route because you save a lot of money going down this way so um if you were to pay the nine euro monthly you would it would roughly work out around 109 110 euro per year uh, per year so you're nearly getting half that if you go down the yearly route and i think it works out about 100 euro if you go down the quarterly route so you're still saving 40 euro if you go down the yearly route so if you're pretty sure that you're going to be using playstation plus you're going to be using the online features of your playstation for the coming year i'd highly recommend going down the yearly route to save you some money and it's the same with the other tiers as well basically the yearly route is always the route you want to go down if that's what you're thinking so playstation plus extra the benefits provides all the benefits from the essential tier and adds a catalog of up to 400 of the most enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games, including blockbuster hits from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party partners. Games in the extra tier are downloadable for play, so no streaming involved with these PS4 and PS5 games. Yeah, so this is quite a price jump. So this is now... Um, already more expensive than Game Pass and you haven't even got to the premium tier yet. So currently for my Game Pass subscription, I, play tw I pay 12.99 euro a month uh, here in Ireland at least. It might be different in the United States. I don't know if you pay um, the same or a little bit more. I, I, I think you guys probably play pay like maybe around the same price anyway. So this one is 14 euro a month. So that's already as it stands now, a euro dearer than Game Pass. Now, I don't think Sony are ever going to be able to compete with Game Pass in this scenario. It's always going to be more of an appealing selection in the subscription service. Um, and that's just simply because Microsoft have a lot more money than Sony do, and they can take the hit. I'm sure that uh, Game Pass is not profitable, um, and they will get a price hike at some point. There's no doubt about that, in my opinion. Um, it's sustainable, as, as Phil likes to use that word, it's sustainable. Um, but um, we'll see what happens. I'm sure Game Pass will probably come... Uh, up a few euro at least it'll go down the netflix route of keep getting price hikes especially with all these new studios coming in and all these new games there's no way they can afford to just keep putting them day one on game pass um uh, like i know they have a lot of subscribers now but i just can't see that being uh being sustainable for the long term so yeah this one is 14 euro a month 40 euro uh quarterly and 100 euro per year um so this basically gives you all the ps4 and ps5 games that will be on ps on this new playstation plus system uh, so playstation plus and playstation now merge together but they're keeping the name playstation plus so now we'll talk about the premium tier so this is basically the competitor to game pass now is this premium tier provides all the benefits of the essential and extra tiers of course adds up to 340 additional games including ps3 games 
games available via cloud streaming, which was one of the biggest disappointments to me, is that you're still not going to be able to download PS3 games. I mean, that is probably one of the biggest complaints about PlayStation now. Uh, and to be honest, streaming is just never going to be as good as being able to download the game. It's as simple as that. Um, no matter how good your internet is, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people with internet uh, that isn't strong enough for this kind of thing that would love to play PS3 games. Um, and the experience just will not be as good via streaming. So that's one of the biggest disappointments that they didn't find a way to get PS3 games on PS5 on, on, this, on this new subscription model. And, you know... I understand that there's probably a lot of uh, complex things that stop it from happening easily, but that would have been uh, a big get to get these PS3 games available via cloud, uh, via download rather than cloud streaming. Uh, but you do get a catalog of beloved classic games available in both streaming and download options from the original PlayStation, the PS2, and the PSP generations. Rip Vita. There's no uh, no mention of the Vita, uh, and I said this in my other video as well. I did want to actually play some Vita games. There's a couple of I think Uncharted Golden Abyss. There was a Killzone game on there as well that I really wanted to play. Or was it Resistance? There was one of one of the two of them. Um, but a little bit disappointing. It is what it is. Um, I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see what kind of PSP games are on there. I did have a PSP at one point, but I can't remember playing too many games on there to be honest. So this offers cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers in markets where PlayStation Now is currently available. Customers can stream games using PS4 and PS5 consoles and PC. And this is probably the biggest new addition, is time-limited game trials will also be offered in this tier, so customers can try select games before they buy. Oh, long gone are the days where you used to just get a free demo for every game anyway. <laughs> but that's a part of the premium tier now, so I'm sure maybe with uh, with their blockbuster new games like God of War 2 and stuff like that, you'll be able to try it out before you buy it, basically, which would be... Um, I, I think it's going to be a cool addition. I mean, I wish uh, it wouldn't have to be in the premium tier, but I think that is a cool, cool addition, no doubt. So, here's the pricing. So, right, I've worked this out. 17 euro monthly... Uh, 50 euro quarterly and only then 120 euro yearly and I say only because if you pay monthly it works out over 200 euro so you're saving nearly 75 euro or over 75 dollars probably um, if you're going down the yearly route you save a lot of money so again worth checking out if you're in this for the long term I know it's hard to commit like that but if you think you are going to be using it for the next year and there's a lot of games coming out in the future that you think they'll be adding to the service and stuff like that i think it's well worth it to go down the yearly route and you will save a lot of money and it says here for markets without cloud streaming playstation plus deluxe will be offered at a lower price compared to uh, to premium so here, Jim Ryan talked about it a little bit. He said the new extra and premium tiers represent a major evolution for PlayStation Plus. With these tiers, a key focus is to ensure that the hundreds of games we offer will include the best quality content that sets us apart. At launch, we plan to include titles such as Death Stranding, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, Mortal Kombat 11, I can't speak English, and Returnal. So that's a decent amount of first party games, but there's no mention of Ratchet and Clank, no mention of, uh, no mention of Horizon, Horizon Forbidden West um, might be a little bit early for Horizon Forbidden West, but I thought maybe Ratchet and Clank would be on there. I thought Demon Souls would be on there. We haven't heard anything about those yet. Um, if it's just going to be like these are the only first party games on there at the start, then I don't know. That, that seems a little um, a little weak. But that's just the PlayStation uh, PlayStation Five games. I'm sure we're going to get more details and more games announced for this uh, for this service as well. The PS4 games that are on there, um, maybe they're like the Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut and Death Stranding Director's Cut. They'll be on here as well. That would make a lot of sense, especially for people coming over uh, from Xbox that have never had a PlayStation or didn't have a PS4 at least. Um, that would be a really good uh, service for them to get involved in because then they'd be able to play those games right off the bat with this uh, service. So this, uh, this thing that says the library will be regularly refreshed as well, does that mean it's like PlayStation Now where they take games out and then put new games in or does that mean that they'll just be putting new games in because if it's the if it's the former then again that's a little bit weak to me because you're taking games out when you're putting new games in um uh, whereas on game pass I, I know games go off game pass but regularly 
uh, are not regularly, but mainly the first party games will always stay on Game Pass. You know what I'm saying? Um, they'll they'll kind of mix and change certain third party games, but the first party games are always going to be on there. So it says more details to come on the games we'll have on our new PlayStation Plus service. So we'll probably get more details on that in the coming months because they do plan um, to launch this, I think, this year. And if you already have a PlayStation Plus um, offering, then you will be transferred over to PlayStation Plus Essential uh, without any extra co uh, cost. And I think if you have PlayStation Now, you will be transferred over to PlayStation Plus Premium um, at no extra cost, uh, cost, at least at the start. So they're releasing a first in Asia and then followed by North America, Europe and the rest of the world. All right, so now that we've filtered through the article, let's give my thoughts on it. So I personally think um, this is a good move for Sony, despite being a little bit underwhelming, and I think maybe a little bit overpriced, at least on the monthly there. I, I think the yearly is fair enough, but the monthly is just a little bit pricey in comparison to Game Pass. Now, it does seem like the service, in my opinion, is going to be uh, worth purchasing, and that's simply because... It has access to 700 games. If you're interested in playing backwards compatibility, I think this is uh, this is huge. I think Game Pass has over 300 games. So, and Game Pass is massive. It has a huge catalog. That that number it could be wrong. Don't quote me. I just checked it on Google. It said over 300 uh, games. Um, and this is planning to have over 700 at the premium tier. So that seems like a lot of games to have on the service 100%. Now, um, there might be a lot of them that aren't worth shit. They're not really... Uh, worth playing but to have that many games in the first place is quite impressive so pricing game pass wins um having day one games straight away on game pass um xbox wins uh, i think playstation as a catalog overall might have the edge maybe or at least be somewhat similar there as well because playstation does have just an unbelievable catalog of games um from playstation 2 up to playstation 5 and ps4 was a damn quality console as well with loads of games so if, if they have all the first party ps4 games on there then that is a big get as well they have uncharted 4 they have the last of us remastered they have all of those on the service then that is um a big get and that could be huge in their fight to take on game pass now as i said i don't think really you can call it a direct competitor to the game pass just because simply um it's not it's not really the same you know it, it's 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 something to try and take on game pass but game pass is so yeah i feel like game pass is the better subscription service but then again um, if you're a PlayStation user and you don't have an Xbox, this is definitely a damn good substitute. And I think if you love PlayStation games, if you love Uncharted and all of the PlayStation Studios games as much as I do, then this is just a, a no brainer to purchase for sure. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd be super interested to see if uh, the majority are um, team Xbox or team PlayStation here. Don't start some little petty console wars in the comments because honestly, I have zero time for it. I have both consoles and i very much enjoy both consoles i must say myself so playstation versus xbox who wins <laughs> no but on a real note i do think xbox is just incredible value for money and um hopefully this uh this new service can help people save a lot of money too because say if you're playing an xbox series x right now that's your main console and you didn't have a ps4 you had an xbox one but you want to get a ps5 you want to get a PS5, what's the first thing you do? And you want to play all of their, their first part. The first thing you do is you get PlayStation Plus. You have access to all of the PS4 games that you missed out on. Uncharted, um, God of War, Horizon. And, you know, you can play those right off the bat. And then you'll also have access to a lot of the PlayStation 5 games. As they mentioned, Returnal, Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man. And I'm sure you'll have the remastered versions of those as well. They won't just give you the PS4 versions, but... We shall see Death Stranding as well. So there's a lot of games there that you can play that you missed out on. So this is absolutely perfect for someone coming over from uh, Xbox to PlayStation or someone wanting to expand and, and have both consoles. 100% well worth your money. Um, for people already having played every PlayStation game and you're not interested in backwards compatibility, probably not for you. You should just 
stick with the essential tier, but um, we'll see what happens. We'll see how they evolve it. I'm very excited for the future of gaming, the future of PlayStation, and the future of Xbox. Um, a lot of new and awesome games to come in the coming years. Uh, I can't wait. So make sure you're subscribed here on the Apex Hound 2 if you want to see more videos like this. This is the Apex Report. It's been fun. Um, if you want to see me do a lot more stuff like this, I'm definitely down because I love doing these news type videos. Yeah, I'm going to be playing more games coming up. I'll play, be playing MLB The Show 22 on my main channel, Apex Sound, uh, this week. And I'll also be checking out Weird West a little bit later um, this week as well. So I'm excited for that. And I'm excited for the months and years to come. You can check me out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Apex Sound. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well. All those links are in the description. It's been my pleasure to serve you all. Peace out.